الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله نويت سنة الأيتكاف My dear Islamic brothers, whenever you are blessed with an opportunity to enter the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, I the masjid, then I was trying to enter according to the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would always enter with his right foot. And upon entering he would recite the dua and then he would make intention for nafli taqaf. Hence the reason why I asked you to say nawaitu sunnah al-aytikaf. By making this intention for the duration that you're, that you're in the masjid, whatever you're doing, you actually get the blessings of being in itikaf. May I remind you to eat, to drink, and to sleep in the masjid is forbidden. But if you make this intention, then all of these things become allowable for you, and you get the reward as well. So a small amount of effort, but a huge amount of reward. There are many blessings in reciting the Park upon the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Amir al-Sunnat, the founder of Dawud Islami, may Allah Azzawajal keep his shadow upon us. And his prayers, Alhamdulillah, is now reaching this Midland city of Walsall, in which we are having a weekly shtama here. I would like to know the personality who is successfully spreading the invitation to goodness, as well as the Madani message of Quran and Sunnah throughout the world, through his sincere religious efforts, and who has caused millions of Islamic brothers and sisters to repent of their sins and tread on the faith of piety making the long for having just a glimpse of him without doubt he is the founder of Dawat Islami Sheikh Tariqat Amir Ahl Sunnat Hazrat Allama Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri he is renowned for his matchless superb quality such as fear of Allah Azzawajal deep love of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam zeal and determination for the observance of Quran and Sunnah zeal for the revival of Sunnah piety, forgiveness, patience, thankfulness, humility, sincerity, good manners, generosity total disinterest in the world concern about the protection of faith ambition to spread religious knowledge and well-wishing of the Muslim in his book Blessings of Etikaf in Fazan e Ramadan, he quotes a hadith of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala sallam, which the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala sallam is reported to have said that whoever recites through the park upon me ten times in the morning and ten times in the evening, he shall gain my intercession on the day of judgment. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. My dear Islam, what a great reward for just a small amount of effort. That on the day of judgment when nobody will be there to help us, father will forget son, mother will forget daughter, your best friends will be nowhere to be seen. The only person that can help you on that day is the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam is saying that you know, if you want to guarantee my help, then a bit of time in the morning, a bit of time in the evening. Recite through the park upon me, and inshallah, Azza wa Jal, I will be your intercessor on the day of judgment. So as Muslims, we should never have time to waste. We should never waste time. And whatever time we have, we should use it properly. And whenever, for example, in this country, if you're a taxi driver and you're waiting for a customer, you're in the shop waiting for a customer, you're in a doctor's surgery, hospital surgery, wherever you are, you're waiting. Don't waste that time in waiting. That waiting time should always be used. And the best way to use your time is in reciting the Rudeh Park upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu ala al-Habib. My dear Islamic brothers. Amir al in one of his beyonds, he talks about many acts of the unfortunate Muslim. And one of them is our bad character and our bad actions. Our kirdar. What is our actions? What are our character? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he saw a namaz a janazah and as the janazah was going past people were speaking ill of this person 
And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when they speak ill of a person that has passed away, then hell becomes wajib for that person. But in the same way, another namaz janaza went past and people were speaking good of this person. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when a person passes away, if somebody speaks good about this person, then heaven is wajib for that person. What do people think about us? What is our character? How do we live our lives? What, is, what do people actually think about us on a day-to-day basis? Sallu alal Habib. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said, I have come to complete the qualities of good character. So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He is the perfect example for us of how our character should be. And if we look at the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we'll see that in certain situations how the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reacted and what we should try and do is when we read about these situations when we hear about these situations we need to ask ourselves that if I was in a similar situation would I react the same? There's a famous story where the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she, he met a woman in the middle of the town and she had some bags and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her where are you going? what are you doing? You know, what are you waiting for? and she said that I am trying to leave this town because Nauzubillah in this town there's a person he's a madman Nauzubillah and this person he's trying to take people away from the deen of our forefathers now the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately knew that this person was talking about himself and there's many times instances happen where you meet somebody and they're talking about you not knowing that they're actually talking about you and this happens so the, this woman she's actually cursing the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nauzubillah She's saying bad things about the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now ask yourself, if you met me for example, and I didn't know who you were, and I started talking about you in third sense, in a third person sense, and saying that such and such person is like this, he's like this, he's like this, and it's actually you that I'm talking about, how would you feel? How would you react? How many of you would raise a hand? How many of you would start using your tongue against me? But what did the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He offered to carry the bags. He said to the woman, I will carry your bags for you. And he carried the bags to the edge of the town. And all the way, all the way to the edge of the town, the woman is complaining about this person. Not knowing that the person she's complaining about is carrying her bags. And when she gets to the edge of the town, and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam still, Kufl Madina, doesn't say anything. He puts the bags down and he turns around to go back. And the woman says to him, my son, you're a very good person. You've been very kind and gentle to me today. What is your name or what is your father's name? And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, that I am that person that you've been talking about all this time. Allah, Allah, Allah. Allahu Akbar. How would we react? How would we react? How many of us would be able to control our nafs and control our temper? How many of us would throw the bags on the woman? How many of us would do all sorts of things? But the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't. And what was the net result? What was the net result of the beautiful character of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That woman, she accepted Islam. How did she accept Islam? Did she read the Quran from cover to cover? Did she compare the Quran with any other book? Did she look at the scientific facts in the Quran and say, yes, this makes sense to me? No. The character of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How is our character? There's also another famous story in which the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he used to go by somebody's house, the woman, she would wait for him and she would throw rubbish on him. How would we react? You go and pass somebody's house and somebody throws water on you. You go and pass somebody's house and somebody throws rubbish on you. And it doesn't just happen once, it doesn't just happen twice, it happens every time you walk past that same house. What would you do? How many of us would pick up a brick? How many of us would smash the door down? How many of us would start kicking the door? How many of us would react? And even if we weren't brave enough in that sense to do that, how many of us would swear or throw a brick and do a runner? But how did the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa react? Nothing. He didn't do anything. He carried on on his way. And then one day, when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is walking past this house, no rubbish. No rubbish is thrown at the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Now if me and you, again, were in that situation, how would we react? Shukr. Thank you. Today we got away with it. We'd be so happy that today we got away. And we'd run on, we'd move on quickly, just in case, this, you know, they've not seen us, we'd move on as quick as possible. And think, you know, thankfully today I've been saved, thankfully today I didn't get rubbish thrown on me, thankfully this didn't happen to me. But is that how the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reacted? He went back and he knocked on the door. He knocked on the door and when he, the door opened he inquired, he said there's a woman here. Is she okay? And when he found out that this woman that every day had been throwing rubbish upon her was ill, he went inside to inquire about her health. Picture the scene. This woman's lying down. She's looking up at the blessed face of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this same person that every day she's been throwing rubbish at. And this same person, today I've not thrown rubbish at him. And today he's come in and inquired about my health. The beautiful character of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This beautiful character, again, net result. The woman, she accepted Islam. This is the beautiful character of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, we may say, that's the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can not have the same patience, we cannot have the same sabr, we cannot have the same control, we cannot have the same nafs as the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll give you an example. Maybe ten years ago, maybe less. In this country. In this country on a Friday night, Saturday night, many of us know what happens in the community on a Friday night and Saturday night. A non-Muslim, he's had a few too many to drink, and he's walking down the street. He's walking down the street, and as he's walking down the street, he's leaning on the walls. Leaning on lampposts and then leaning on the wall. And then he leans on something, and when he leans on it, it opens. It's a door. And as the door opens, he goes inside. And he goes inside and he wobbles about, not knowing where he is, not knowing what is happening to him. But then because he's had too much alcohol inside his stomach, his stomach starts to rumble as well. And when his stomach starts to rumble, he's sick. He's sick. And as soon as he's sick, he then lies down where he is, and goes to sleep. He doesn't know where he is. Some hours later, he opens his eyes. And when he opens his eyes, what does he see? He sees that somebody has put a pillow under his head. He sees that somebody has taken his shoes off him. He sees that when he looks up, he looks around and he realizes that he's in a house of worship. He'd actually stumbled into a masjid. Now just think, if somebody stumbled into this masjid now, with their shoes on, and they were drunk, and they were sick on the mustard carpet, how would we react? How would we react? So this person, he, he shocked that all of a sudden there's a pillow underneath him. He then remembers that he'd been sick, and he puts his hand to his face, and he realizes somebody's cleaned his face. He then gets up and looks around, he's trying to remember where he'd been sick. He knew, and all of a sudden the guilt started to come into him. He started to feel guilty that I've been sick in here, and this is the house of worship. And he doesn't realize that it's a Muslim or what he's got. He's he guessing, he's working it out. The next minute, what does he see? He sees somebody coming with a tray. Breakfast. The Imam Sahib is bringing breakfast in. The tea, toast, or whatever it is on the breakfast tray. And the person says to the Imam Sahib that, you know, I'm really, really sorry, but you know, I, think I've, I think I've been sick in here. And the mom said, is it okay? It's no problem. I cleaned it up. And he's feeling all embarrassed and guilty about his actions. But the Imam Sahib, he gives him breakfast. The Imam Sahib treats him kindly. The Imam Sahib doesn't abuse him. The Imam Sahib is kind and gentle to him. Net result, two hours later, he becomes a Muslim. Why? Why? Why did he become a Muslim? Why did he become a Muslim? Why did his life change? Did he read the Qur'an from cover to cover? Did he compare the Qur'an to other books? Did he look at the scientific facts in the Qur'an? Did he go and meet scholars, meet people, meet mubalik of Dal Islami? Did he do any of this? No. The kirdar, the character of the Muslim that he met. So our character is very, very important. Whether you stand up here and do a bian or not, 
Whether you go and do ilaqai dora, brai neki ki dawat or not, whether you go on a kafir or not, whether you give darsana, or not, whether you're an imam, whether you're a scholar, whatever you are, every one of us can do the work of the deen. Every one of us can represent the deen. And our character, if it is good, then people will look favorably on the deen. If our character is bad, people will not look favorably on the deen. Now we all, we're all Muslims, alhamdulillah. And we all believe Islam is the truth. We all believe Islam is haq, is truth. Now unless we make a change in ourselves, unless we try to make a change in the people around us, what is the future? What is the future for the Muslims in this country? Alhamdulillah elders that came to this country, they built these masjids. They didn't know the language. They worked so hard to build these masjids. They built the masjids, and it's our jobs to make these masjids beautiful. Not by putting extra tiles on, bigger posters on, stained windows on. That's not how you make the masjid beautiful. You make the masjid beautiful by the namazis in the masjid. That's not our job. Our elders came and they worked hard to build these masjids. Now it's our job to keep these masjids beautiful. We need to make a change in ourselves. We need to be willing to sacrifice some time for the deen. We need to be able to give some time back and leave and get something further hereafter for ourselves. Because again, our mentality is everything here. Everything in the dunya here. We build a big house here, we build a big cars here, we build the courties here, we have the most of the mean in the you know land in the village here. Just a couple of days ago somebody was saying to me that somebody went back to Pakistan and he spent all the money that he had and when he came back he said that in my village I'm the only person that owns all the houses. And he's proud of it. That I own all the houses in the village. And that is his achievement. He thinks that that is what his achievement. Who knows the angel of death might come to him tomorrow. But this is what our mentality is, that is the dunya. We're not saying, how many of us have said, can, can say to ourselves, he's saying that I've got all the houses in the village. What we should be saying is, I've got so many houses inshallah as well in paradise. What have I prepared for the hereafter? Because the angel of death is going to come. It's not, gonna, you know, it's not as if it's going to change its mind, it's definitely going to come. Are we ready? Have we prepared anything for the hereafter? Have we ever thought about it? We all think we've got this mentality that we're going to live forever. That the angel of death is going to go there, it's going to go there, it's going to go to that house, it's going to go to this house, but it's not going to come to my house. But it is. It's just a matter of time. And we don't know how long that time is. Minutes, days, weeks, months, years. It's just a matter of time. Go to the graveyard. Those people that on the day of Eid went to the graveyard and did dua for the deceased, there you will see it on the grave. Read the gravestones and you will see. You will see the 80 years old. You will see the 70 year old. The 60 year old. But you also see the 20 year olds. The 15 year olds. The 25 year olds. The 30 year olds. There is no guarantee. The angel of death is going to come. And we need to make sure we are ready when the angel of death comes. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala sallam has told us that when we enter that dark and lonely grave on our own when we enter that dark and lonely grave we're going to get asked questions now what's the beauty and the mercy of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he's told us the questions that we're going to get asked you know when you're at school and you're at college and your teacher or your lecturer gives you a hint of what's going to come up in the exam and you're really happy he says, you know, this question is going to come up. So you plan, you prepare yourself. You get that question sorted. So at least you got them marks. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, these are the questions. And these are the answers. Prepare yourself. How easy can it be? How easy can it be? He's saying, these are the questions, these are the answers. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. When you enter that dark and lonely grave on your own, and the first question that you're going to be asked is, Who is your Lord? And the Prophet Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that your Lord is Allah azza wa jalla. So that should be the answer. Simple. Second question. What is your deen? My deen is Islam. I am a Muslim. My way of life, my deen is Islam. 
But is it really? Is it really your deen Islam? The youngsters that are here today, I ask you a question. How many of the youngsters that are here today can name 10 football players that play for the national side of this country? How many of them can name 10 international cricket players? How many of them can name 10 football players? How many of them can name 10, name 10 movie stars? How many of them can name 10 films? How many of them can name 10 actresses? Probably the most of you. How many of them can name 10 companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How many of them can even name 10 prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal? Think about it. When you're asked, what is your deen? My deen is Islam. My dear Islam brothers, we have a chance to make a change in our lives. We have a chance to make a change in our lives. The angel of death has not come yet. This heart is still beating. Whilst this heart is beating, we have a chance. When it stops, there's no more chances. Whilst it's beating, we have a chance. So today, Alhamdulillah, you've all come here today. You've taken time out. You could have been with families now. You could have been doing what anybody else could be doing right now. But Alhamdulillah, you made the choice. You made a right choice to come here today. You come here with this mentality that I want to listen. I want to learn. I want to make a change in my life. But as soon as we get out of here, Shaitan's going to be on our case again. Shaitan's going to, want, not going to stop us. I'm going to give you advice now of what you should do. But as soon as you leave here, Shaitan's going to be strong. Shaitan's going to try everything to get hold of you. But we need to fight against Shaitan. You've heard it. Those people that are listening to my Madri channel, they've heard it. That Shaitan ke khilaf jang, chari rehe. And Emil the Sunnati says that there's no compromise. No ceasefire. No ceasefire on the day of Eid. No ceasefire at weddings. No ceasefire at home. No ceasefire at work. No ceasefire wherever we go. So we need to make strong intentions. And one of the intentions I want you to make today is in the same, just about the same enthusiasm that you read your namaz for 30 days, we're going to read our namaz five times a day with Jamaat in the first stuff for the rest of the year as well. Inshallah. We're going to come to this weekly ishtama every week. Inshallah. We're going to travel, inshallah, Zujil, and a Madani Kafra for three days every month. Inshallah. We're going to fill in the Madani Namaz card. Inshallah. Those brothers that don't know what the Madani Namaz card is, Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, there'll be a bust at the back outside today. If you take nothing from the stall today, take a Madani Namat card. Take that Madani Namat card and read it every single day. It will take you no more than 12 minutes to read that in a day. Every day just read it. And by reading that, Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, you will see a change in your lives. We need to make a change in our lives. And when we make a change in our lives, then Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we can make a change in our households as well. When we make a change in our households, we can make a change in our areas as well. When we make a change in our area, we can make a change in the city, we can make a change in the county, we can make a change in the country, and we can make a change in the whole world. And this is the mission statement of Daud Salami. That I must try to rectify myself and the people of the whole world. Inshallah. I pray to Allah if I've said anything wrong, Allah forgive me. And I pray to Allah that the same enthusiasm that we've had during the month of Ramadan, that the spirit, the jazbah of Ramadan, although the month of Ramadan has left us, and maybe we've not achieved what we should have achieved during the month of Ramadan, but the enthusiasm that we try to have during that month, we continue with that enthusiasm for the rest of our lives. Ameen bijahi nabil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib.